Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for joining and staying here with me. Um, Usually at the end of the presentation, we have some Q&A session. I don't know which, if we're going to have time for this uh, right now, but um, I will actually, this time, in, in the middle of this presentation, I will ask some questions. Uh, I will have some questions to you, but don't be scared. There won't be many of them, and it will be quite simple. Uh, and you can answer just by raising your hand, and the choices will be like yes or no, or maybe something different. But let me just move on very quickly to something that, believe it or not, but I never did uh, before on any other conference, and introduce myself. Uh, people are learning still. So uh, my name is Patrick Stelina. I'm a composer. I also like to consider myself adaptive music designer. And I'm also academic teacher. I teach at the University of Lower Silesia uh, in Wrocław, where we have a um, game design program. And also occasionally I teach at, um, thank you, uh, I teach at Music Academy uh, in Wrocław uh, as well. I also make virtual instruments based on sampling and synthesis. And I founded this uh, tiny sample library company called uh, Sonic Atoms. And uh, what I do basically is just uh, recording different instruments, and I also use help of uh, talented musicians which can beautifully play some instruments, instruments which I can't, and then I turn them into virtual instruments based on samples, and I release them under the name of Sonic Atoms. And I started, I think, like two, no, sorry, three years ago, and probably like two years ago, I was offered a partnership with uh, Steinberg, or Steinberg, however you want to call it, um, which, uh, if you don't know, it's uh, one of the uh, one of the major um, music software developers. So, um, going to main uh, subject of this speech, finally, um, what's the big deal about uh, adaptive music? Why do we talk about this subject all the time, get back to it over and over again? And um, I think that it's, it's kind of obvious that, that most of the big guys already mastered the subject um, in AAA games, maybe not all of them, but probably most of them. But there are some smaller productions which uh, don't use uh, that much adaptive music. And I don't mean only like super tiny indie uh, companies, but also some bigger ones which are uh, aspiring AAA, for instance. And um, sometimes they, they don't use that much adaptive music or they use just very simplified uh, methods uh, to have some sort of change in music uh, in the gameplay. And of course, we could argue probably that this is a budget matter or budget issue, like most of the time. Uh, but not always. Uh, I'm thinking that maybe sometimes uh, some game producers, maybe some game developers, maybe some even starting composers mm, don't have this awareness of, um, of adaptive music. And maybe some people are scared. Maybe they think that's too much work or something. Um, but. I, I think that, honestly, for us, at least, composers, making non-adaptive music versus making adaptive music isn't that much different in terms of workload. Of course, we have to prepare some additional assets, uh, which, we, which we need to then put into some system and then implement in a game. And it need, of course, it re requires some testing as well. But it, it, it's not that much different. Um, maybe mindset is a little bit different when we compose music for adaptivity uh, instead of just using uh, like traditional linear form. So what I thought, it would be maybe interesting, hopefully this is going to work, <laughs> because we never know, uh, that, uh, that we could actually experience and see the difference um, between using adaptive music versus non-adaptive music on some few examples. And also, what I would like to show you is um, how the music works, and we will try to make some sort of simulation of the game um, so that you can see and hear um, how music changes based on some simple decisions, like you know, going forward or backwards or whatever, fighting or not fighting, or talking or not. Mm, so before we go into this meat and potatoes, I would like to just very quickly, and I will try to rush it because I know we are out of time probably even now. Uh, what is adaptive music, just to clear it? 
Uh, so without going into deep uh, descriptions, it's just music which adapts to the gameplay. It can adapt to something that happens in the game itself, in the environment, or maybe it's based on player decisions. Mm, and I also prepared some sort of, some sort of list of uh, ideas, what kind of factors and what kind of var variables uh, could uh, influence the music. But even without this, uh, this situation that we, that, we, uh, that we managed somehow, thanks to, thanks to the great team, uh, I rehearsed this uh, presentation today and then I realized that I would need probably two hours to go that deep and tell you everything about all of those uh, ideas which I have here on the list. So if you want, you can take a picture and maybe we could chat after this if you'd like. But just to go very quickly, uh, these are just some ideas for factors which could influence music in a game uh, based on different, let's say, mechanics or maybe, or, or even different game types. Like in story-based games, you could go very deep with dialogue, for instance. You can, you can make it as simple as possible just by changing the music to dialogue mode, but you can also go very deep and even prepare various versions of music based on choices of the player, like you know, questions, answers, and different variations for different answers, for instance, when you, when you talk to some NPC uh, in the game. And the same thing goes with like strategic game. You can use maybe weather uh, in some strategic games. Uh, for instance, when there's sunny day, you may have even no music at all, and then when there's a, some big storm, you may have some dramatic music just to get you know, some, some interesting feelings uh, for the player. Because sometimes using silence is even more powerful uh, than uh, using you know, many, many different uh, tracks. Uh, and uh, because it's, it's also sometimes it's just tiring uh, for, for the player, especially if the game is very long. And another, another type is action. And this is probably the most obvious one for everyone because, because we are used, very used to uh, hear things like different music in exploration versus combat or even health. Like uh, This is a very common technique to use health uh, factor uh, to change the music because we always expect that if the health goes down, we get some sort of a feedback from the game that we are almost dying. So we, we very often use it, use it to control the, the music in a game. And here's uh, one question which I probably will answer myself. Is adaptive music necessary? I, I also planned to, uh, to say something, maybe a little more about this subject, but I will try to rush it. So my take on it is not necessary, but I would like to only say that it's, to me, it's a little bit like with um, 3D character animation, because is, uh, imagine, is um, transition between walk cycle and running necessary? Well, it's not. We, we, we didn't have it some years, a few years ago, right? Maybe 10, maybe 15. But now, because it's possible, we want the game to be fluid. We want the gameplay to be interesting and also to have this kind of you know, immersive experience. So we try to make it the best possible. And the same thing goes with music, at least for me, that we, we want to, to raise the bar every single time when we do something new. And we want to use also this uh, advantage that we can do it right now, because it wasn't possible in era of, like, let's say, PlayStation 1, for instance. So here are just a couple of benefits of using adaptive music. If, if any one of you ever thought maybe that it's not really necessary to do it. So first of all, it's, there is, uh, you, you, you would have more immersive gameplay because it's very common when, when there is no adaptive music and when it's implemented very uh, simply, very roughly, that you hear um, that music changes rapidly because one track ends, another begins because, I don't know, like maybe level changes or something happens. And then uh, it's, it's just, um, it just gets you out of the gets you out of the world you, because it's uh, because it's just um, somehow uh, changing changing your per perception of, of you know experiencing the, the game. Um, next thing, which to me at least is 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 kind of funny because uh, no awkward moments uh, in with uh, uh, with inappropriate music. This is something that's common. Uh, imagine that you are exploring some beautiful, uh, colorful world, and you know you hear some 
joyful music, some pim pam pam pim pam, and then uh, you are encountering some NPC on the map, and you start dialogue, and then this NPC is telling you, okay, you know what, my mother just died, and you still hear pim pam pam pim pam, and it's just, you know, it's, it's inappropriate in the moment, and it can ruin, actually, the experience, because it doesn't fit completely to the, to the, to the specific moment, and as we know, especially those people who are somehow related to narration in the game, to, to, to writing, uh, know that those subtleties are making huge difference. So you can actually very easily ruin a moment by using inappropriate music in a specific moment. Uh, next thing, impression, impression, impression sorry, <laughs> of a higher amount of tracks, uh, which, is, which is actually interesting because sometimes if you have, uh, you, can, you can have like 10 minute long loop, but if, if you hear it exactly the same over and over and over again 20 times, uh, you, you eventually you, you will recognize that this is exactly the same loop. But if you have some changes, even some random small changes uh, in an adaptive music system, or you are changing the music a little bit, so even if you go back to some segment which you already heard, the order of those segments, those music segments, is a little bit different, and it makes, um, it makes this impression that you know, the music was composed this way because you are hearing cohesive uh, piece of music in a way. And finally, cohesiveness of entire gameplay, which is probably this just summary of those, of those benefits. All right, so now I would like to show you some music examples, and this, these are going to be from K.O. the Kangaroo, the game which, uh, which I finished last year. And um, it, it has... Of course, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a game for, for, for kids and also for some old fans which have kids uh, by themselves right now. Um, and I would like to show you one example uh, with, uh, with music, of course. Hopefully this is going to work. Okay. And maybe to, to rush it a little bit, I will try to say something in the middle of videos from time to time. Okay, so here comes the first question. I'm not going to ask you if you like the music because this could be a suicide question. So let me just try to avoid that. Uh, but try to stay a little bit objective, even if you don't like it. Um, first question, who thinks that the music uh, fits to the setting of the game? I mean, like, visually, does it, does it work? Anyone? Oh, thank God. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, so here's another question. <laughs> uh, do you think that, or, or rather, who thinks that the music fits to the overall action of the game, of the gameplay? All right, all right, thank you very much. So now let's, uh, let's hear another example. Hopefully you're gonna hear some tiny differences. <laughs> Go! 
Okay, so another question. Who thinks that this version has a little bit better result with, okay, thank you. <laughs> I was hoping for that, so there's no surprise, but you know, there's always a fear. All right, so here's another example, and uh, maybe I will just play the first one and then, then say something. Only Jack can come up with that. You can see I cannot really play this game. I was actually playing for the first time since release, so I forgot how to punch. Okay, so Maybe some of you thinks that uh, there was some change in this music, like overall during the gameplay, some something was changing. Anyone? The same thing, right? Over and over, over and over again, right? So um, I would just like to clear out because I have, I, I, when I saw this level for the first time, I had an idea for this actually for this chamber, uh, because in the kangaroo there are many simple jokes and some Easter eggs, and I had this idea that maybe I would I, I could create some sort of an Easter egg in the music itself. So I had, a, I had an idea for this chamber when I saw those lasers. So probably you will hear it because it's, it's not exactly the same thing that I was trying to pretend it to be, but hopefully you will, you will hear a reference. All this bus for a tool? Only Gadget can come up with that. Keo is going on Mission Impossible for a second. It's not exactly the same because I was I was a little bit scared that maybe someone will have some problems with that. Like maybe Studio. So it's not note by note the same, but it's a reference. And now we are back to this main, uh, let's say main main segment of music, which we usually hear on this level. Yeah, and obviously here you, you can hear the change of music because we, we actually get down to the lab. It was like super secret lab, so I felt that we need to change music in here to make this kind of feeling that we are now getting into this like secret zone. Ah, uh, oh, sorry, I didn't want to close it down. So, yeah, a little marketing here. If you'd like to listen more of music of KO, from KO the Kangaroo right now, it's released on all music platforms uh, year after premiere, so not, not that obvious, but uh, yeah, right now it's, it's uh, available. So if you'd like it, it would be my, my pleasure and honor uh, if you'd like to hear it. And now I would like to very quickly go through, hopefully gonna work, uh, how adaptive music is being made. So very quickly, uh, we basically make music like 
every single time when it's linear, when it's music for its own sake, but we split the music in different assets, and we, of course, sometimes prepare some additional elements uh, to mix it with the, main, uh, with the main track. So we use things like intros, outros, main loop, which we usually land on, uh, but then when we want to make a transition from one loop to another, very often it doesn't work that well, especially if it's like a little bit different tempo, maybe a little bit different tonality, then we use additional assets, which is a transition, and also things like stingers, and stingers are just, sometimes it's a single element, like single sound, or short melody, which we can play, for instance, if you open like some secret door maybe, and you just want to give the player a feedback that, okay, this is something, you know, this is something interesting, so then the player could hear it and immediately has this, uh, this kind of uh, feedback. And this is more or less how it would look like. I, I won't, maybe I won't play it because you, you hear it anyway in those examples which I'm showing you, so I will have a little bit more time, but I w what I wanted to show you, because it's not that obvious, at least not for those people who are not um, involved in music production process, we very often use things like stems, which are basically layers of music. Like in this case, you can hear right now strings uh, and harp, and this is something that we could say it's like a base of, uh, of a piece of music. And then we have some additional layers, like in this case, now you can hear brass instruments, And the third layer is going to be some pulls. Subtle things, but still. And finally, uh, last stem is a melody. So as you can hear, even just by adding some layers and taking them back, we can we can even create this illusion of some sort of arrangement in music, even, even if we have that short loop. So now I would like to uh, show you just some examples of different types of music systems that we use. And this is actually quite simple, especially for those of you who create games. You have very often some huge uh, images, some huge structures, of, especially in narration. Uh, so this is going to be very simple for you. We have horizon horizontal and vertical types of music systems, and we have something that combines those two uh, philosophies. So horizontal is, is like the simplest way we can, we can make uh, adaptive music when we have just one segment meaning let's say one loop and then we want to make some change so we go to segment number two then number three and sometimes we can go both ways like from one to two from two to three or, or back and so on and this is simple version and this is a little bit more complex version is the same method but there are just more options because segment two for instance has three versions it could be like uh, three different uh, mix versions or maybe in one version the melody is a little bit different but the bass is the same, and so on and so forth. So um, next thing is vertical music design, and this is exactly the stem uh, thing that I showed you before. Basically, we use different layers, and we can just turn them on and off, of course, smoothly, uh, to get this impression of uh, musical arrangement and also creating some tension uh, intentionally when we want to, for instance, create some uh, scary moment, we can add some layer or anything else. And this is, this is something that I usually use, uh, meaning this more complex version, where you have both of, uh, of, both, of both worlds. Sorry. Uh, so we have like vertical system combined with, uh, with horizontal system. So we have, different, we have different layers, but also we have different segments which we can uh, get to or, or get back from. All right. And finally, uh, I would like to show you some adaptive music systems, which we usually do in FMOD or WISE, because these are two most popular platforms, two most popular middlewares. And the first example will be from game Slavic Punk Old Timer from Red Square Games, uh, which uh, will be released this year, uh, I think. Um, that's what they told me. Um, and just to give you some, some, uh, some clue what it is, uh, it's just top-down shooter, which is, uh, and the setting, as you can see, it's kind of uh, futuristic, uh, some, 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 some place in future, and it's also dirty, and it's also somewhat influenced, um, inspired rather, I should say, uh, by Eastern European uh, culture a little bit.
Ah, sorry. Not that. Always some problems. All right, so this is F mod, and uh, in F mod, um, I created this uh, music system for uh, Slavic punk in the way that it's like just going from point A to B and so on. And there are also some additional stems which we can add, but I will show you this in the fly. So, first, when we start the map, uh, we start the level, we. We. Sup uh, sorry. It worked. All right, so maybe I will, do, I will do it this way. Maybe something happened when, because FMOD is actually kind of buggy, that's why everybody wants to work in WISE. Uh, never mind. Uh, but this is, this is the moment when we start the level. So we are exploring the level, we are going somewhere, right? And in some moment, you may see some enemy. So you may actually eliminate this enemy quietly or you can get into combat. Uh, would you like to go into combat? Yeah. Okay. So uh, in this system, we actually have two types of combat because you actually may approach an enemy very quickly because you can you know, eliminate it very quickly. So there was no point in making like super long transitions into combat. So there is just additional stem which allows us to get some sort of attention, just adding a little bit of pulse into the, into the music, so you are feeling now that you are fighting. But usually, it, you, you, usually you don't hear it very long, uh, because it's, as it said, it's quick combat. But then, after this, after this fight, probably you want to go somewhere, right? And then you may realize that there are some doors which are closed. So what do you do when you have closed doors? We have to hack it. We have to hack it. Okay, so we are hacking the we are hacking the door. And for this case, I have a stinger, which is not just some random melody. This is actually main theme, or rather, fracture of a main theme of, 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 of the game. And we usually hear it in some moment when the character uh, discovers something or, or just basically moves forward. But then, let's say, you are moving forward and you are actually approaching some gangsters which killed someone, and you are entering danger zone. So you are now starting to hear a little bit and feel a little bit more tension, right? But you are still, you are not fighting. You are not fighting, you have to move on. Or you can hide or you can approach the, uh, those enemies. So do you want to hide or do you want to approach those enemies? All right, so now, this is gonna be probably something you didn't expect. Because now, this quick combat is adding just a little bit more. It's, you know, you don't feel that you're really fighting. It's just a little bit more, because you are still in the, in the place where you have just a couple of enemies, not many of them. But then, you see a computer. Who wants to go to the computer? All right, we are going to the computer, so computer, probably number four. When we approach the computer, then some more enemies comes in and they are attacking us and we are hacking the computer. So we have to hack the computer, we have to stand in some place uh, to get the information from the computer and we are fighting. And after we finish the fight, now we have some release. And after the release, we actually not only finished fighting, but we also um, achieved some achieved something because we get some information, some intel. So you hear this melody played by guitar, which is a motif which I use for, I, I call it investigation motif. So every single time when you get some clue, uh, you would hear this, this melody. It could be on different instrument, but very often it's this guitar. All right, so now you're moving on and you are just basically moving through the map. At the getting, let me just check the hour. Okay, so we will move on to another example in a second. Because now we are approaching again some danger zone 
and we we need to fight it because there is no way to, to, to get around it because it's very linear gameplay. So I will just simply rush it. Okay, didn't work. Maybe wrong number. Yeah. And after we finish fighting, of course we have some outro. And as you can see here, I also have this like silent loop where is one event and this, these are just those stingers. So even if you st stop fighting, even if you finish it, ah, I left the number here, it shouldn't be this way. Um, so uh, even, if you, even if you finished the, 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 the combat, but you are still on the level, uh, you actually may discover something more. That's why I have those stingers just prepared in case we need to use them. All right, so now I would like to move on to another example. This is Wise, and in here I have, at least to me, interesting, uh, interesting thing because this is a prototype of the system for the game which right now is completely redesigned. So you probably won't hear this music, never, probably, uh, because we are completely redesigning everything, even music, and probably the system will be completely different as well. So I changed all the names uh, of events and, uh, and some... Uh, uh, of events and those, uh, yeah, events, sorry, uh, forgot uh, the word. Um, yeah, so when we start the, the, the game, we start the level, we get this kind of little bit ambient music. And just to give you some thought what it is and where you are, uh, because right now I would like to ask you a little bit more questions because it's not that linear at Slavic Punk uh, before. So. In here, we are standing in some dark forest, and it's not a horror, really, but it's kind of scary. And basically, of course, like in any game, we have to move forward, right? So we are moving forward. And then you see that there's some, there's some NPC, there is some guy standing. He looks a little bit menacing, so would you like to talk to him? No! Oh, man, you ruined everything. <laughs> All right, so let's talk. This guy is called Edward. And now we get into this uh, melody on cello, which is a theme of the character. Uh, and this Edward is actually telling us that his wife is missing and he's very scared that maybe something happened to her because this forest is very scary. There are some monsters in there. So, you know, something, something bad could happen. But this is something that I called quick talk because it's not uh, very engaging. This is just a sim simple information that we get from Edward. We don't really have ability to talk, him, to, talk to him uh, much longer. That's why it's just uh, called quick talk. And in this system, I have two versions of dialogues. We have like quick talks like this one, and we also have some sort of narrative. So when we move forward, we approach some sort of danger zone. We enter some, um, some place on the map when there is some dark force. So we need to, to, to feel a little bit more you know, scary sounds. And then we see there is some sort of a chamber which we can get into it. Do we want to get into the chamber or do we want to move on? To the chamber, all right, to the chamber, thank you, to the chamber. So now, this is actually something that I, that I put into narrative part of the system. And in narrative part of the system, it, it basically works like this, that there is some sort of intro, there is some, let's say, motif, which you hear at the beginning, but then eventually, if you stay in this place much longer than we expect, and this is something that players do sometimes, right? So we have to somehow figure out how to prepare everything, uh, also music-wise. Uh, so it will eventually go into some sort of loop, which doesn't have any melodies, it's just some sort of ambient music. But then, when you get out of the chamber, you go back to some sort of exploration. Where do I have it? This is main exploration. And you are still exploring this forest, and you see something. And it can be scary, so I wouldn't go there. But who wants to go there? All right, so let's see what's there. So 
And now you hear some unsettling sounds, but not, not too much. We, we see there is some monster in there, but we don't approach it. We want to go further? Sure, all right, so let's go quickly. Okay, there is not one monster, there are many of them. Now they are attacking us, so we, we have to either fight with them or we can run. Do you want to run or, or fight? Run, all right, we are running. All right, we are running. We are not approaching them. So by accident, we actually discovered that there is Edward's wife somewhere, Anna. So we are, we are talking to her. I should actually ask you if you want to talk, but I just assumed that you would. All right, so we are talking to Anna, and now we hear the same melody, but played by a different instrument, because this is something what I use for Anna. Uh, and by the way, I, I know it, maybe it doesn't sound great, because this is a prototype, these are all virtual instruments, not mixed very well, uh, so maybe balance isn't right yet, uh, and probably ne never will, because we are, as I said, remaking everything. And now when we talk to Anna, we can actually say that, you know, Edward is looking for her. So we can go with Anna to Edward and they will have this kind of reunion. And as you can hear, it's, it's all very, very subtle, right? Because it's still exploration. There are some dialogues, but I didn't want to go to the front, like we, in Slavic punk, for instance, where you know, it, it just hits hard. This is all playing with subtleties. And after they, they reunited, we can go back to exploration and you know, we can explore this world uh, and we, we can still, because this is a very modular system, so it's not like with, with the system in FMOD, which I showed you before, when we are moving linearly from A to B, C, and, and so on. In here, we can actually just do whatever we want. We can just decide to go left, right, talk, not talk, fight, not, uh, go back, and so on. Yeah, so I, I, I would probably could uh, show you this for next 15 minutes, but I know that we are already late. Uh, so I will just stop it now, and hopefully you had some time, uh, interesting time with it. Sorry for the beginning. Thank you very much for coming here. And now I could actually show this, right? Because I spoil it a little bit. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Patrick, thank you very much. I know that you were super stressed about it uh, and uh, all the technical problems that we had, but I'm super excited that we've managed to do it. We have the time thank for you. one question uh, or comment or remark from the audience if anyone wants to interact publicly with Patrick. So, hi, Patrick. Thank you for the talk. So hey. I've got a question uh, regarding uh, the composing of the music. Uh, does the music um, has, uh, have, has to be composed um, with this adaptive approach from scratch, or is it uh, possible to adapt uh, the music later on uh, to the approach of being adaptive? Like, uh, if, do you have any experience? Yeah, sure, that? sure, of course. Uh, well, you can, of course, you can use some, some music which already exists or is composed uh, without thinking about that adaptivity. And if you, and if you, um, if you take some elements from it, if you have, of course, if you have access, right, to, to those tracks in the mix, in the project, you can prepare those assets like intros, and outros, uh, loops, and so on. So you can do it. Uh, however, for composition itself, at least to me, it's better if I know how the system works because I can avoid some mistakes. Because very often we are still having some limitations. We cannot do everything that we imagine. So uh, when we know what, we, what problems we may encounter, we can avoid those problems just by having this in mind while composing. At least this is my approach. I like to do it. So that's why also I prepared this prototype. 
I wouldn't have this prototype if I would like wait to the end of the process of game production. I prepared it in the very early, uh, at a very early stage, so uh, you know I can I could test it and see how it works. And then if it works, I can make more music based on the same approach, more on the same system um, scheme. Awesome. Thank you very much once again, Patrick Selina from Sonic Atoms. Thank you.